Welcome back to CNN 10. Wherever you're watching, we appreciate your taking 10 minutes to get updated on news and features from around the world. I'm Carl Azus. First report takes us to the U.S. Capitol. Republicans and Democrats there say it won't be the same without U.S. Senator John McCain. The Republican who represented the state of Arizona passed away Saturday at the age of 81. He'd been battling an aggressive form of brain cancer for more than a year, and that was one of many fights he took on in his lifetime. John McCain was a survivor of plane crashes, plural. One of them came in 1967 while he was serving as a decorated Navy bomber pilot during the Vietnam War. He became a prisoner of that war, suffering injuries under North Vietnamese captivity that lasted the rest of his life, but he did survive. And McCain eventually turned to politics, serving in the U.S. House of Representatives starting in 1983 and the Senate three years later. He campaigned twice for the U.S. presidency, but lost the Republican nomination to George W. Bush in the year 2000. He won his party's nomination in the 2008 race, but lost the presidency to Barack Obama. Throughout all of it, Senator McCain defined himself as a maverick, someone who could take an independent stand from the mainstream. He publicly spoke out against various policies from both Democratic and Republican administrations, including those of President Obama and President Trump. But he had the respect of politicians from both sides of the aisle. McCain will lie in state at the U.S. Capitol this week. It's an honor reserved for military officers and government officials. It means his casket will be on display at the rotunda of the Capitol, where the public can pay their final respects to the late senator. His impact on Washington extended well beyond the senators he worked with. How are you? The very last time I interviewed Senator John McCain, he was blunt. But Jake, you know, every life has to end one way or another. It was the kind of straight talk that characterized the Arizona senator's career. I first met him aboard his campaign bus, the Straight Talk Express, in 1999. Look at that. Five times. <laughs> he was an underdog Republican presidential candidate, a bona fide war hero, and a sitting U.S. senator. And I was just a young campaign reporter. But I got to spend a lot of time with him, and I learned a lot about his contempt for the phoniness of politics, about how to handle adversity, and about the importance of honoring veterans. Thank you. I salute you. I got to ride on the Straight Talk Express again when he ran in 2008. Do you have the fire in the belly to win this <laughs> like you did last time? time? McCain described the politician-reporter relationship as adversarial, and as I've learned, that's not a bad thing. What matters is how it's conducted. By all means, let us argue. Our differences are not petty. They often involve cherished beliefs and represent our best judgment about what is right for our country and humanity. McCain fought fiercely, knowing that disagreements did not necessarily mean disrespect. It was a good fight, and we should be very proud. He also knew that losses, even of presidential proportion, were no reason for remorse. I won't spend a moment of the future regretting what might have been. This campaign was and will remain the great honor of my life. Serving with honor, it's something the third generation naval officer knew quite well. I've never lived a day in good times or bad that I didn't thank God for the privilege of serving the United States of America. His time in service included being shot down over Vietnam and held as a prisoner of war for five and a half years, where he was tortured. I was on a flight over the city of Hanoi. As the son of an admiral, he was offered early release, but he refused, so those longer held men could return home before him. Years later, he was still gracious, and he often joked he was invincible. I survived many near-death experiences, and uh, so I think that I'm really the most fortunate person that I've ever known or heard of. McCain seemed happy with the life he led because it was a life of service. There is nothing more ennobling than serving a cause greater than oneself. In tough times on the campaign trail, he liked to share a favorite quote. I was reminded of the words of Chairman Mao, who once said, it's always darkest before it's totally black. But anyway. But in his final days, Senator John McCain seems as alight with passion and purpose as ever. No. He spurred his fellow senators to remember their mission to the public. We're getting nothing done, my friends. We're getting nothing done. Nearly two decades after I wrote my first story on the maverick John McCain, my final question for him in an interview was, 
the most difficult to ask. And oddly, it was perhaps the easiest for him to answer. But how do you want the American people to remember you? Uh, he served his country. And not always right. Made a lot of mistakes. Made a lot of errors. But served his country. And I hope we could add honorably. Police in Jacksonville, Florida are investigating a shooting that happened at a video game tournament Sunday. It took place in a restaurant at the Jacksonville Landing, an open-air marketplace along the St. Johns River. At a qualifying event for the Madden 19 NFL Tournament, at least one suspect apparently opened fire. Preliminary reports said last night that at least 11 people were injured and that four people were killed. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office said that one suspected shooter was also dead and that there were no, quote, outstanding suspects as of yesterday afternoon. Police were asking any witnesses who might have gotten video of the event to share it with them. Details about the shooting were still coming in as we produce this show. CNN.com will have the latest information. 10 second trivia. In what sport would you find the terms green room, impact zone, and washing machine? Caving, parasailing, surfing, or cliff diving? room is the inside of a curling wave. The impact zone is where waves are breaking and a washing machine is when a surfer is tossed underwater by a wave. The Mix Academy is a program at New Song Church in Santa Ana, California. It offers dinner on Wednesday nights to people from all walks of life, followed by classes in everything from baking and fitness to robotics and English. One of its most famous events involves surfing lessons from a professional coach it's said to be available to the people who most need a smile. So this bear walks into a hotel. Sounds like the start of a joke. This wasn't a joke. It's a black bear that somehow sauntered into a Rocky Mountain hotel. The good news is it didn't cause any problems for the hotel's 300 guests. In fact, it didn't really do any damage either. Just rearranged some furniture and eventually headed back outside. The front desk supervisor said, when you have a hotel next to a national park, wildlife is part of the gig. So we kind of dismissed it as just a sign of the times. But will the unbearable guest affect the hotel's reviews? Will some folks pen the place? Will it just add to the hotel's Cody accolades? It's certainly a polarizing patron that could cause some folks to berate security. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10.